So Jared McLean will be talking to us about Hawaii's uh, rainfall analysis and mapping application and the decision support tool um, that they've created. Uh, so yeah, I'm Jared McLean and I'll be presenting on the Hawaii rainfall analysis and mapping application. So basically, um, there's a set of rainfall stations um, around Hawaii that collect rainfall data. Um, we have a set of data running from 1920 to present. Uh, so what we're doing is basically taking the rainfall station data and rasterizing it out into a mapping for the entire state. So a continuous map for the state of Hawaii. Um, if you kind of look, so this application provides a um, visualization and analysis platform for viewing this rainfall data. Um, so if you kind of look at the, uh, so you can, can see that there's a 250 mirror by 250 mirror resolution uh, raster at you know, the base level. Uh, and this is what is generated. These are the maps that are generated from all of the rainfall station data. These points on the map are the individual rainfall stations that are provided. So um, yeah, then if you select one of these, you can see kind of the individual values for that specific station and some of the information about that station. Uh, so this uh, main screen kind of allows you to, you can adjust between the map and this viewing area um, and can also filter the stations out. So this first portion um, allows you to create a main like focus data set. So to know what date range you want. And currently we only have a monthly rainfall data from 1990 present and partial and partially filled. So what the different fill types are, are there's actually three fill types, um, uh, completely filled, uh, which is a serially complete data set using multiple techniques to actually try and fill in different values. So fill in all of the values for all of the rainfall stations for every date. Um, but it's a little bit, and it has kind of increased uncertainty because uh, it uses multiple techniques over some of the other techniques. So the main uh, part of this would be the partial filled one, which uses a single gap filling technique to fill in some of the rainfall stations, but only the ones that can be reasonably estimated based on the other station, the other surrounding stations. So uh, the reason for this is that in some of the stations don't have uh, data for all the different points in time. So that's what that is. And then there's also going to be an un completely unfilled, which is just the raw rainfall station values. Uh, so yeah, right now then this application has the monthly rainfall from 99 present and then only partial filled. Uh, so the partial filled rainfall data for the stations is actually what is used to generate the rainfall map rasters. Um, so if we go to let me move this. Uh, so if we go to this data view panel, this allows us to view the information for individual rainfall stations. So see here, this shows the seven rainfall stations that are available. This shows a breakdown of the specific station that's currently selected in the viewer. Uh, it shows all the metadata for the station. And then currently, not all of the stations um, for all of the different date periods, no, we don't have all the daily rainfall station data. So basically what this will do is it'll show all the daily data uh, we have more of it for a bit further back. Let me go to 2014. There's a lot of, um, we have most of the data for there. So just pulling in the rainfall station data and uh, rainfall raster data right now. So it's loading. Uh, should take a few seconds, there we go. Okay, so this is for February in 2014. And if I select now site, we should have more of the daily rainfall station data. So let this load. Uh, so right now what this is doing is it's taking all, so this is just the current 
monthly uh, data point for this specific station. Right now it's pulling in all of the data for the date range selected. So from 1999 and 2019 for the specific rainfall stations. Uh, it looks like this one doesn't actually have the data loaded in right now. Um, let me try a different one. There we go. Okay, so this one has, uh, so you can see this is all the daily rainfall data for the selected station. Um, for this is just for the focus month, so for February 2014. There's a graph down here that shows that, and we can also change this to show for the current year and also for the entire uh, date range selected. So that would be December 20, uh, 1990 to December 2019. Um, yeah, so this shows a breakdown of all the rainfall station values for that range. Um, so then there's also a basic map control section, which has no just in general layer opacity. So you can kind of view the underlying map through it. And then also it comes with, uh, the application has two different color schemes for the uh, rainfall raster layer. Uh, so monochromatic, which is meant to provide kind of a consistent view of the data. It's just a blue uh, single color scale. Uh, and then there's also kind of this rainbow color scheme, which is provide for user comfort. There are some issues with this color scheme in that uh, it go because it goes from red to purple with yellow in between. It can provide uh, some perceptual artifacts because the yellow areas are actually brighter. They have a greater relative luminosity compared to the other colors. So it kind of draws your eye to those areas, even though there's uh, those are kind of the mid range areas. Uh, and there are actually some color schemes that have been developed that uh, in court, that use the rainbow color scheme, but also provide a more consistent uh, color scaling, which I am also looking into incorporating into this application. So that should uh, provide a good balance between user comfort and um, more uh, more consistent uh, perceptual scaling. Um, and then there's also this one in data exporting. Uh, currently, we're still waiting on the final data set. So this isn't all hooked up yet, but basically what this will be is we'll be able to, uh, users will be able to export the um, actual, the generated geotiffs for all the rainfall, uh, rainfall data and also all the rainfall station data. Um, so they'll be able to select between you know, the different uh, counties. So this has you no know, different spatial extents if they want just Maui or in South it for the entire state, they could do that. Um, and then this is just you know, which type of data they want, whether it's the uh, raster data or rainfall station data. And then uh, just for the focus date or the entire date range. So then you couldn't take, uh, take the data and set just for if I'm in 2014 or for this entire date range. Um, so the application also uses, uh, I'm showing the filtering system. So if we go back to the data view, there's also a filtering system for the different rainfall stations. Uh, so this allows us to just say which, uh, to filter on the specific metadata properties of the different rainfall stations. So if you're only specific and in, are interested in specific rainfall stations, what you can do is say, uh, let's say you know the SKN, which is kind of the identifying tag for the different stations. You can go through and you know, search for the ones that you want. Uh, so yeah, let's say this was a rainfall station that I was interested in. And you can create a filter for that, and then it'll filter out only the rainfall stations that you're interested in here. Um, and then this uh, top part also provides a kind of walkthrough mechanism. So you can go, it has a cache ahead system. So whenever you uh, move through the data set, it starts to load the uh, rainfall rasters and station values ahead of where you're moving. So you now for the most part, if you're using this system, it should be fairly smooth unless you start to go really fast and you often wait a bit for it to load, of course. 
but yeah, so uh, this uh, specific part's still going a bit, so yeah. Uh, but for the most part, then uh, it's fairly responsive and you can kind of walk through and see the change over time of the different rainfall levels for the state. Uh, yeah, so that's the, those are kind of the main features uh, where, uh, and of course, this is since still working project in progress, we're getting some uh, additional rainfall station values. And we're also planning on putting uh, the ability to filter by um, uh, custom spatial coordinates. So like you can could potentially input a shapefile or something for a area that you're interested in and then only get the uh, values for that area. And also the ability to place custom uh, rainfall stations, so kind of virtual rainfall stations where you would click on a specific area on the map and you would be able to, instead of just these predefined stations, you would be able to get like uh, the rainfall data for that specific point that you selected in the map, the rasterized rainfall data. So not just the station data. And yeah, so those are things that will be developed in kind of in the future. So, um, yeah, so I'll take in questions now. Thank you very much, Jared. So we have several questions coming in. First one is from Rajesh. Uh, this focusing on um, the raster affected by all of the number of data points stations in that region. Um, so I guess maybe uh, if you want to. Yes. So if I can go down. Yeah, so the red, uh, so the red area, so this is actually, uh, so red is actually a very low area. So that's one of the issues with the rainbow color scale. Let me switch back to the monochromatic one. Um, yeah. yeah, so this in this is a little bit easier to tell. So the uh, white areas would be low rainfall and the darker blue areas would be high, higher rainfall. Um, so like I said, there are some uh, color schemes that have been developed that use kind of a, uh, that use a rainbow color scheme. So then that's commonly used in climatological data and with climatological data, which is why I include it. But there are some colors and scales that have been developed that provide a more consistent scaling than where it's easier to identify, you no. Know, which areas are you know, low, medium, high without having the really poor differences in relative luminosity. So, um, yeah, and we, so, we, so we have another one from Chun Han um, asking, is the climate data freely public? Uh, yeah, so the point of this is that this uh, website will be available in the public and one will be able to come and retrieve any of the rainfall station and rainfall raster data. Um, that's, yeah, the purpose is to make it available to as many people as possible, so. Great. And I guess I had a question of my own. Um, so I guess, do you have any projects that are local to the University of Hawaii that are going to be utilizing this tool, or is there any, um, you know, use cases of why it's being developed? Uh, so currently, I oh yeah, actually, we're, there we're working with. Um, so there's actually a group of researchers at the university that are working on uh, ranch data. So uh, they're trying to find. Uh, so for ranches, uh, for you no know, ranchers that uh, handle cattle and stuff, uh, they're using the rainfall, our rainfall data to you know, try and predict basically you know, how to uh, spread out cattle. And uh, I, I don't recall ex exactly everything that they're doing, although basically using climatological data to try to um, in, improve the quality of ranches in for Hawaii. Uh, so, and our, this rainfall data is one of the 
the assets that they're using. Very interesting. So it's almost as a way for them to diversify the pastures that they're uh, sending cattle to so it doesn't impact the vegetation too much. Yeah. So yeah, and one of the issues with the 22 is that because the uh, rainfall and uh, biomes and stuff change so dramatically over uh, some relatively small areas of land, it's a little bit difficult to know, know necessarily where to place specific herds of cattle in, in different times of the year. So that's, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and I just wanted to also update um, and say this to everyone, uh, what was going on in chat. Um, Rajesh and Sean were talking about the fact that the front end in, is angular and the back end oh, is yes. tapas. Um, mm -hmm. And front end is also hosted through GitHub pages. So yeah. I think that is a great note. Um, any other questions for Jared before we launch into a general discussion? All right, I'm not seeing any pop through. So thank you, Jared, for a great presentation. It's really exciting to uh, see what you guys are working on. 